Golden Doodle is a mixed dog breed that is very famous for its adorable appearance, hypoallergenic coats, and friendly demeanor. These designer dogs are very smart and trainable, thanks to their parents. Poodle is the second smartest dog breed, while Golden Retriever ranks as the fourth smartest dog breed in the dog's world. Golden Doodles are a combination of these two smart dogs, and they are also super intelligent. But to unlock their full potential, you will have to properly train them. The training process should start as soon as possible. The earlier you start training, the easier and faster it will be because young puppies are in the learning phase and you can easily shape their personality, habits, and behaviors. So you need to start training your puppy from the moment she arrives at home. Eight to 10 weeks of age is the time when you have to start training your puppy. Before this age, they are not able to understand your commands. The designation of a specific spot for the bathroom is the first step of the potty training process. This is so important that you need to do it even before you bring home a new puppy. And once your puppy arrives home, you need to introduce her to the bathroom spot from day one. Your puppy is new to the environment and she is still trying to adjust to her new home, so you have a perfect opportunity to set boundaries from day one. For this purpose, you need to choose a specific spot for the bathroom. You can choose indoor arrangements, but an outdoor spot is always the preferred option. Dedicate a corner of your backyard or lawn to their bathroom. It is supposed to be a convenient location that is easily and quickly accessible. When choosing a spot, consider the weather condition and make sure the spot is accessible in all weather conditions, including rain and snow. It should be sheltered from the sun. Ideally, it would be a side area and not in the pathways. Puppies are like toddlers. They were born a few weeks ago and they don't have any idea that there are right and wrong places for the bathroom. It is your responsibility to teach them bathroom manners. Having a daily schedule is the key to the potty training process. This plays a significant role and is very beneficial for you and your puppy. You need to make a daily schedule for your puppy that includes regular times for eating, sleeping, playing, and going to the bathroom on scheduled times. Among these, the feeding schedule plays a decisive role. You can feed them two to three times a day, but it should always be done on schedule times because that will ensure regular bowel movements and thus regular bathroom breaks. This helps both of you to almost exactly predict their bathroom timings and thus reduce indoor accidents. Dogs are creatures of habit and they do best on a schedule. This magical formula of a daily routine is the key for the success of the potty training process. There are certain times of the day when puppies are more likely need to go to the bathroom first thing in the morning and the last thing before going to bed, 10 to 15 minutes after they take their meals or drink, whenever they wake up from a nap, whenever you have to leave them in the crate. They may also feel an urge after a long playing session or exercise. Because of their fast metabolism and less holding capacity, young puppies need more bathroom breaks. If your golden doodle is a toy or mini size, they will need more bathroom breaks than standard size doodles. You can tell your puppy has an urge for the bathroom by looking at her body language. She will show you certain signs, gestures, and behaviors whenever she wants to go to the bathroom. These signs could be physical, verbal, or a combination of both. Keep an eye on your puppy and look for these early signs. Sniffing around the floor is a clear indication that she is finding an old spot for the bathroom. Sometimes a puppy walks in circles, which is another indication that she is finding a suitable spot for the bathroom. When a puppy becomes restless and starts looking around, that probably means she has an urge for the bathroom. Sometimes she stops playing and goes towards the door. And some of the late signs are squatting or lifting a leg, which means she is about to defecate. Young puppies, especially those between two and three months old, may not actively show these signs. These signs will become more visible as they mature. Whenever you notice these signs, take them to the designated bathroom spot. Potty accidents are part of the training process and they are inevitable, especially in the beginning of the training. This is mainly because of two main reasons. First, young puppies not only have small bladders, but they also have poor control over their bladders, which is why sometimes they have indoor accidents. The second main reason is their inability to understand the process. They need some time to fully grasp the concept of a dedicated potty spot. However, sometimes they have indoor accidents because of some underlying medical conditions like diarrhea, 
bladder issues, or urinary tract infection. The best way to prevent indoor accidents is to give more opportunities of relieving themselves on the designated spot. If you find them having an indoor accident, interrupt them and then immediately carry them to the designated spot. However, you don't need to scare her. Yelling, scolding, or punishing will make them fearful of you and they will not go to the bathroom when you are around. When an accident happens indoors, you need to properly clean the mess and don't leave any trace of it. Dogs have a strong sense of smell and the odor from the previous spot attracts them. You cannot get rid of odor by using a normal cleaner. You will have to use an enzymatic cleaner or an odor neutralizing product to get rid of odor and enzymes and thus eliminate every trace of the indoor accident. This could be a suitable option, but in certain conditions only. For example, if your dog is sick, injured, or recovering from a surgery. If you are living in an apartment building, then indoor arrangements are obviously the best option. If the weather conditions are bad, for example, if it is raining or snowing, you can use puppy pads. The size of a golden doodle also plays a role. If you have a toy-sized doodle, the internal arrangements work best for them. However, if you have a standard size doodle, which is the maximum size, you may want to consider outdoor options. An outdoor spot for the bathroom is an ideal and natural choice. Dogs naturally prefer an outdoor spot because of grass, soil, and fresh air. The biggest drawback of the internal arrangements is that puppies are more likely to relieve themselves anywhere inside, such as on the floor, carpet, or even bed. They view all of the interior as potential potty spots and don't limit themselves to pads only. Choose one specific spot for the bathroom, either indoors or outdoors. You should not be using both at the same time. Outdoor spots appeal to their natural instincts and are a preferred option. According to the American Kennel Club, crates are an important puppy house training tool that can make your life easier. The concept behind using crates is that dogs have a cleaning nature and they love to keep their den clean. In this case, the crate has been used as their den, so they naturally don't want any mess inside the crate. Dogs understand that the crate is their den and sleeping area, and because of their cleaning instinct, they want it to be clean all the time. So whenever a puppy has an urge for the bathroom, she will be reluctant to relieve herself inside the crate and instead will go outside to the designated potty spot. So the crate is a great way to speed up the potty training process. You need to associate a command with the bathroom. This command could be a word or a phrase like toilet, go potty, do business, etc. The command should be a unique word and you need to use the same command all the time without changing it. The Humane Society of the US has a generic formula for calculating how long your puppy can hold it. It's called the months to hours formula. For example, a two month old puppy can hold it for about two hours, while a three month old puppy can be expected to hold it for about three hours. The American Kennel Club also recognizes the months to hours formula for calculating a puppy's bladder control. However, they also say that each puppy is different, so the timings may vary. Additionally, the formula has an upper limit of nine months to a year. This means that this formula should not be used once your puppy reaches nine months of age. So their age determines their holding ability. But along with that, the activity level also plays a role. If your puppy is more active, she will have faster bowel movements and thus more need for bathroom breaks. Size is another factor that influences their holding ability. Toy-sized poodles have tiny bladders and therefore they can hold it for shorter periods of time as compared to large-sized doodles. The generic formula of months to hours gives a maximum time duration and you should not strictly follow it. Instead, you should give your puppy more chances of relieving themselves. Holding it for a long time is an unhealthy practice and could lead to bladder infections or urinary tract infections. Golden Doodles are fairly easy to potty train thanks to their intelligent parents. However, regardless of their intelligence, potty training still takes some time. You can expect them to completely potty train in four to six months. It is because potty training is indeed a long and daunting task. Don't expect too much in the first few weeks because puppies are still developing control over their bladders. Toy and mini sized doodles will be harder to potty train than the standard size. It is because of their tiny bladders and poor control over their bowel muscles. As an owner, you need to be fully dedicated to the training process. Be patient and consistent. You will see the progress in the first few weeks.
the first step of crate training is to determine if the crate training is required or not. According to the American Kennel Club, crate training is vitally important for dogs and has been recommended by vets, trainers, and breeders. It can benefit dogs of all ages and gives them a sense of security and safety. It creates a shelter for your dog and is a safe haven for them. The Humane Society of the United States has similar views. Dogs have natural instincts for a comfortable, quiet, and safe place. Crate is an important tool for preventing chewing and for house training a puppy. It also provides a safe way of transportation. However, it is not a magical solution and should not be used incorrectly. And for some dogs, crates will not be an option. Regardless of all its benefits and recommendations, crate is a choice and not a mandatory thing for dogs. The main idea behind using crates is to provide a den-like space to your dog. It is their safe haven and sanctuary. It is their own personal space in the house where they can relax and take a nap. A crate is a place to keep them during unsupervised time when you have to go outside for a short time. According to the American Kennel Club, crate ranks high as a potty training tool. Dogs are clean animals and their cleaning instinct demands to keep their den clean. This prompts them to go outside for the bathroom and not to soil the crate. Therefore, the crate works as an efficient and faster method for potty training a dog. A crate is a must-have tool for traveling with your dog. If your dog is crate trained, you can easily transport them in a car, train, and even on a plane. Many airlines require dogs to be in a crate during travel, and some hotels also have this requirement of keeping the dog in a crate. Your goal should be to make the crate their bedroom and a favorite place in the house. And for this purpose, you need to decorate its interior in a way to make it a safe, cozy, and appealing place for your puppy. When it comes to making the crate a cozy place, the bedding space is of utmost importance. Although you can use towels, blankets, or rugs, it is highly recommended to use a dog bed or mattress. These are purpose-made and are soft, easily washable, and non-allergenic. They are also chew-proof. These beds are made from soft material which supports their body weight and even prevents joint problems. The second important thing in the crate is their toys and treats. You should provide your puppy with a lot of toys like chew toys, Kong toys, and food puzzle toys. These toys will keep them entertained, busy, and mentally stimulated when they are alone in the crate. These interactive toys also prevent them from getting bored in the crate. Kong toys are the best choice for a crate because they can be filled with a treat and your puppy will have something to enjoy and play with when they are alone in the crate. Provide safe toys to your puppy as she will be unsupervised in the crate and she could swallow small toys or rip them apart, which can be dangerous. Make sure the crate has enough ventilation, lighting, and a view of the surroundings. It is important to remove any harness, collar, tags, or other clothing accessory from your puppy before placing her in a crate. It is a safety hazard that should not be taken lightly because these items could get stuck in the crate and cause strangulation. You can install a dog camera around the crate, you can connect it with your smartphone, and that way you can check on your puppy remotely and see how they're doing. The introduction of the crate is a crucial part of the overall training process. It is important to ensure that this introduction is done in a pleasant and positive way. You can encourage them to go inside the crate by using praise and treats. Use a calm and happy tone of voice and toss their favorite treat inside the crate. However, you can also give them a chance to explore the crate on their own. Puppies are curious by nature and they will be tempted to explore the appealing environment of the crate. They will likely circle around it, sniff it, and eventually go inside of it because the interior is filled with a comfy bed and her favorite toys and treats. Once she is inside the crate, don't close the door of the crate because your puppy may freak out and feel trapped. Instead, give them more treats and let them become comfortable in the crate. The first few attempts of the crate training will be challenging for both of you. In the beginning, you need to do everything gradually without rushing the process. For example, in the first few attempts at using the crate, don't close the door at all. You can introduce it later by closing it for a short time and then gradually extending the amount of time the door is closed. Similarly, when you're first starting out, it's best to keep them in the crate for short periods of time. And then in the subsequent attempts, you can gradually increase the amount of time they spend in the crate. It is recommended to introduce puppies to the crate after a walk, exercise, or playing session. 
This is because a tired puppy is more likely to take a nap in the crate. However, if the puppy is in an active mood, she will not settle down and try to go outside to play. When you leave your puppy in the crate for the first time, it's common for them to whine, whimper, or bark. This is a normal reaction for puppies who are not used to being left alone in a crate. Their whining is a way of trying to get your attention and get out of the crate. However, it's important to ignore their whining. If you let your puppy out of the crate every time they whine, they will learn that whining is a way to get what they want. This will only make the problem worse and they will whine whenever you put them back in the crate. However, if your puppy's whining continues for an extended period of time, you should check on them to make sure they are not in distress. If your puppy associates the crate with a positive place, she will most likely go into the crate on her own and the whole training process will be a piece of cake. Therefore, you need to do everything to build a positive image of the crate in your puppy's mind. Here are a few things you can do to achieve this goal. Make the crate an inviting place by putting a comfy bed inside and filling it with their favorite toys and treats. Serve them meals inside the crate as that will subconsciously associate them with the crate. Give your dog free access to the crate and let them go in and out of the crate on their own. Play different crate games like playing fetch or hiding treats in the crate for your dog to find. Don't rush the process, be patient and do everything gradually. On the other hand, there are a few things that can disrupt the crate training process and you need to avoid these things. Never use the crate for punishment or isolation, otherwise your puppy will develop a negative association with the crate. Don't force them inside the crate because if you do so, she will associate the crate with an undesirable place. Never use crates of the wrong size or type. Don't keep them in the crate for an extended period of time. You need to find a good location for keeping the crate. This is crucial because if your puppy does not like the location of the crate, she will be reluctant to go inside of it, even if she likes the crate itself. An ideal place for keeping the crate is a central location where the dog can see and hear the family members. A dog needs to feel the vibe of a family and household. They should not feel like they are abandoned or isolated. They don't need to have the fear of missing out. This ideal location could be a family room, living room, kitchen, or your bedroom. At night, you can keep the crate in your bedroom or in a nearby location. If you have a toy-sized doodle, they will need a small-sized crate, which you can keep in your bedroom. However, on the flip side, the crate should not be placed in direct sunlight or exposed to extreme weather conditions. It should be away from electrical appliances, heat sources, and other potential hazards. Don't keep the crate in a backyard or basement. You need to teach your dog to associate the crate with a verbal command. These could be words like crate, kennel, etc. You can use separate commands for going inside and outside of the crate, like go inside and out. It is important to be consistent with your commands and not to change them. You need to choose the right crate for your dog. It could be of any type, but the size and dimensions matter a lot. The crate should not be too big or too small. Rather, it should perfectly match the dog's size. If the crate has an extra space, your puppy will be tempted to use its one corner for sleep and another for the bathroom. According to general guidelines, the crate should be large enough for your dog to stand up, turn around, and stretch out freely without touching the sides of the crate. Golden Doodles come in three sizes, standard, mini, and toy. You can choose a crate size according to the size of your poodle. You need to buy a crate for their full size because puppies are constantly growing and they don't have a fixed size. So during their initial few months when they are growing rapidly, you can use dividers to adjust the size of the crate by sectioning off the space. The use of dividers or wall panels is a valuable asset as it ensures that the crate is always appropriate for the size of the doodle. There are some basic requirements in a crate. It should be made from a good material that cannot be chewed or scratched. Many crates come with double doors, which is a bonus point. Dividers are a necessary tool for puppies. A crate with a removable floor tray is a must-have for easy cleaning. Wire crate is considered the best and most versatile option for home usage. They not only have a good view of the surroundings, but also offer a good ventilation system. Washing them is super easy, and you can even use divider panels to adjust their size. Wooden crates are a stylish alternative to wire crates. These fancy crates are often used to match the aesthetics of home furniture. Their top can be used as a table, 
Since they are made from wood, they are more tempting for puppies to chew on. Crates that are made from plastic or fabric materials are often used as travel crates. They are also known as flight kennels since they are approved by the IATA for airline travel. You can use these travel crates for car rides, on buses, and even on flights. They are lightweight, easily foldable, and washable, making them an ideal choice for traveling with your dog. Crates should always be used humanely and a dog should be kept in the crate for the required time only. According to the Humane Society of the United States, puppies under six months of age should not stay in a crate for more than three or four hours at a time. Puppies have small bladders and they cannot hold it for a long time, so if you keep them in the crate for too long, they will have no option but to relieve themselves inside the crate. Another major reason for a shorter stay in the crate is the requirement for physical and mental stimulation. Golden Doodles are active and athletic dogs, just like their parents. They need a good amount of exercise, playing sessions, and games. These cute dogs should only be put in a crate when you cannot supervise them, like when you have to do some chores or go outside for a short time. If you or your family members are around, there is absolutely no need to keep them in the crate. If you have a 9 to 5 job, you should not keep your dog in the crate. Instead, you should take the help of family or friends to take care of your dog. You can also take them to a doggy daycare center. Keeping them in the crate for too long is a cruel practice, and this will make them bored and depressed. They could even develop separation anxiety. A crate is just a tool, and it could be a good or bad thing for a dog, depending on how it is used. It should always be used correctly and responsibly, otherwise it will become a disaster for your dog. Golden Doodles are very smart dogs and they can be trained easily. However, we cannot be sure about the exact time duration of their training because each puppy has a unique personality, temperament, and experiences. Some puppies take a few days or weeks to become comfortable with the crate, while others may need a few months to become used to the crate. At maximum, you can expect them to become fully crate trained in four to six months. As an owner, it's important to be patient, consistent, and fully dedicated to the training process. You will see the progress gradually. Golden Doodles are a hybrid of two very smart dogs, Poodles and Golden Retrievers. According to famous canine psychologist, Dr. Stanley Corin, Poodles are the second smartest dog breed, while Golden Retrievers are the fourth smartest dog breed in the canine's world. So a hybrid of these two smart dogs will be super intelligent, and that is what the Golden Doodles are. These Doodles were initially bred to be guide dogs for allergic people, but nowadays they are one of the most popular family dogs. They are also one of the best emotional support dogs, thanks to their gentle and friendly parents. Golden Doodles are one of the easiest breeds to train. They can learn new commands in less than five repetitions, which is an amazing ability of learning something new. These designer dogs are not only known for their adorable appearance, but can also be trained to be guide, therapy, and service dogs. Since both of their parents, Poodle and Goldens, were bred to be hunting dogs, Golden Doodles have inherited the same instincts. They love swimming and are excellent water retriever dogs, just like their parents. The training classes for young puppies are very beneficial. You can enroll your puppy in a training class where she will learn the basics of training as well as manners and desired behaviors. Most importantly, these classes provide a big opportunity for socialization. Your puppy will be exposed to dogs of all sizes and breeds and she will learn how to interact with them. These training classes start when a puppy is around 10 weeks old. Their duration is different depending upon the required skill. Some schools offer advanced training they can train your puppy for dog sports and competitions like agility, obedience, and tracking. You can find these puppy classes at a dog club or shelter. The American Kennel Club also offers different training programs like Star Puppy and Canine Good Citizen programs. An ideal training session is supposed to have three main properties, short, focused, and entertaining. Train them for a short time, like five to 10 minutes. However, you can have two to three short sessions throughout the day. Puppies have shorter attention spans as compared to adult dogs and they need shorter training sessions. Puppies are easily distracted, so it's important to train them in a quiet environment. Avoid training them in areas with loud noises, such as traffic or children playing. 
they learn best when they are focused. The American Kennel Club recommends that every puppy should learn these five basic commands. Come, heal, sit, down, and stay. According to the American Veterinary Society of Animal Behavior, only reward-based training methods should be used for dog training. Aversive methods have a damaging effect and are not effective. Therefore, they should not be used for dog training. The American Kennel Club says that the foundation of training should be based on positive reinforcement. The Humane Society of the United States calls it one of the most powerful tools. Positive reinforcement in the form of praise and treats is a proven method for training a dog. This reward-based training is very effective and is the key for the success of training. Puppies are food-driven and you can use treats to lure them towards desired actions. Punishment is a cruel and counterproductive method. Yelling, scolding, or punishing them are totally ineffective and often yield negative results. Your dog will become stubborn and may even show aggressive behavior. Socialization is vital for training and it helps them become well-mannered dogs. A puppy needs to learn how to behave around other humans, dogs, and pets. You need to expose your puppy to the outside environment. Take them to a park, local market, and other places. The best thing you can do for the socialization of a puppy is to take them to a dog's park or enroll them in a puppy kindergarten class. The ideal time for a socialization of a puppy is the first few months of their life. During this time, expose them to new people, places, and experiences. Make them comfortable around other dogs and pets. Let them experience new things like car rides. Make them familiar with different sounds, smells, and sights. However, don't let your puppy interact with other dogs and pets until they have received their initial vaccinations. Training is a big responsibility for a dog owner, and these two factors are totally related to the dog owner. Training is a gradual process. You need to be patient and consistent. Although golden doodles are smart, but sometimes an individual puppy may need more time and repetitions to learn a command, which is totally normal. Sometimes the training process is delayed or takes more time, and the only reason for that is the owner is not consistent in training the dog. Patience and consistency are the keys to a successful training process. Training is, indeed, a challenging task, but it is an extremely rewarding thing. This is something that is going to stay with them for the rest of their life, so it is totally worth the effort and time.